Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome into this Hog Hoop Report with Kevin McPherson. That's Kevin McPherson. I'm Evan Kamiko. Kevin, we've been saying it all along for months now, for weeks, that it looks like Eric Musselman is trying to find his way out of Fayetteville. And earlier this week, the USC opening officially became Eric Musselman's next job as he took that and is now the head coach of the Southern California Trojans. Overall, when we kind of just look back at Muss's career and then we'll eventually get into, you know, what comes next for Arkansas. What are your main takeaways from the five years that Muss was the head hog here in Arkansas? Five years ago when, when Mike Anderson was let go, Musselman was not the first name on Arkansas's wish list. He, he had, had to work down to him. He was very eager and wanted the job, reached out and made it be known he wanted the job, and it circled back to him. Uh, it was a great hire. It was a great hire in terms of results, the branding, the getting back to national relevance. I mean, back to back to back, sweet 16s, including two elite eights on the front end of that run. Um, and Arkansas had really good finishes in SEC play when you look at uh, years two and three. Uh, not as good the last couple of years. Yes, there was a sweet 16, but Arkansas started to slide in terms of the metrics in the Southeastern Conference, eight and 10 for a 10th place finish in year four. And then last season, a historically bad season for the Razorbacks. And I always wonder, because I was reporting for weeks and months, really when it became obvious to me that Arkansas couldn't get an at-large bid is when I went ahead and, and disclosed it. Um, and so that was back in February, late January, early February. That's how bad the season was to that point. Uh, but I'd been hearing it even prior to that. And so I'm not surprised one bit. It's not about a bad season. This was a guy that was looking for ways out and multiple ways out uh, when you looked at the arc of this season before it ever got to that point. Uh, so it, it was only when they got to that point that I started to talk about it. Uh, so I'm not one bit surprised. Uh, but I look back on the era, and, I'm there, you know, there may be some taint and tarnish based on some stuff going on up there, including the bad season. But to me, if your results, if you really clued in on that, the positive branding that went on each of those years, the move back to national relevance, getting doing things that hadn't happened since the Eddie Sutton and Nolan Richardson eras. I think you have to look at it as a great hire and, and a positive experience over five years overall, um, you know, in the Eric Melsman era. And now he's gone to, to Southern Cal. That was one of the, the jobs I was told a long time ago. If Louisville didn't work out for him, that'd be one of four or five West Coast jobs that he'd have interest in. And so that's how it played out. Absolutely, Kevin. And now Moss leaves for USC and Arkansas now has to move forward. Hunter Juracek and falls on his shoulders. Who is going to be the next guy here in Fayetteville? And we've heard a lot of names so far this week. Originally, it was Chris Beard. And then he and Ole Miss kind of came to terms. Then it went to Jerome Tang. And then he and K-State came to terms. And now we're kind of in this limbo situation where Arkansas didn't get their first two guys. And now they move on to what's next and potentially Chris Jans and Little Rock's Daryl Walker. But let's start with the whole Beard and Tang thing first. What were you hearing when those were, you know, all transpiring as there was a lot of talk really early on that it seemed like Arkansas was going to get Chris Beard here to Fayetteville. That was the, that was the groundswell, but it's always that way, Evan. And it almost never works out that you get the first guy. Mm -hmm. And I knew that Arkansas was serious about it. That was not a smoke screen. There was an offer made. Um, and I was told by one source that's close to his camp that Will Wade, or, or excuse me, that, that Chris Beard, I've got Will <laughs> Wade on the line. Uh, Chris Beard was going to use it for leverage for a raise. Uh, he and the and the phraseology I got out of it was this was the Gus Malzahn kind of situation, but in basketball mm -hmm. and Arkansas chasing Gus a lot and rumors and uh, so anyway that was one take on it. And then Thursday night, just hours after the Musselman announcement, when the, where everybody was really hearing that momentum for Beard, uh, I had a contact close to uh, the staff, basically connected to his staff at Ole Miss. Uh, didn't deny that Beard would, was in play with Arkansas, but but pointed me in the direction of Jerome Tang. So I could so that wasn't confirmation. Maybe Beard was out, but I thought it was odd that I was being now pointed in the direction of Jerome Tang. Well, that's what played out the next day. Beard uh, announced as the top target. We all knew that. It kind of came out with some national guys. And then, you know, not much longer after that, that he was going to stay uh, at Ole Miss. And so, uh, you know, the word is he got he was able to raise himself there, which is what one of the sources told me he thought would, would, was going to happen. You never know what's what is truth. And, you know, you know, I push back sometimes. Are you just being pessimistic and saying that? Do you really know something? 
He goes, I, he goes, I'm just telling you that's how it's going to play out. I don't know. I wasn't convinced like others. I thought maybe it would land that way. Um, and then, you know, Tang, same thing really pretty quickly. Um, and, you know, one national analyst has already come out and put a tweet out that it, the, that that decision was a lot about, you know, family dynamics for Tang, I guess, you could take that and, you know, I don't know any details on that to know what that meant, mm -hmm. but it was due to family considerations. Uh, and I had heard that, but you hear so many things. I didn't know, you know, what that meant. I, that's not something I would report because that, you know, the right. bottom line, did he take it or not? I mean, he didn't. Um, and so now we're in an interesting place where I've been able to confirm two interviews that are supposed to take place today. Uh, Daryl Walker, the former Razorback, great, All-American uh, basically an NBA draft uh, lottery pick when he came out in the 80s. NBA mm -hmm. League expansion ties with Isaiah Thomas. Ties with Michael Jordan played, you know, won a ring with Michael Jordan in the 90s in Chicago and Jordan hired him twice to coach the Wizards and the Mystics in the WNBA. So here's a guy with a lot of NBA ties as a player, as a coach. Been on the college level now for a few years. Been down here in Little Rock. Just came off a really good season, 20-plus wins. Uh, was one win away in the in his conference tournament, the Ohio Valley Conference, from getting to the NCAA tournament, but did win the re league regular season. And so he's got an interview lined up today. Um, and as does Chris Jans. Now, this is the one I'm really keeping an eye on in terms of you've got an SEC coach. Mississippi State coming in to interview it on an SEC job. Typically, when stuff like that happens, when we compare it to Muslim, even though it's out of the league, going to a, you know a, a named school, not necessarily a named basketball program, but going to interview, it's not as much an interview really to me. It seems it's just kind of dot and I's cross and T's, and it turns into a coordination. Uh, if, if Chris, unless something fell apart on this interview that I was able to confirm last night would be happening today, unless something fell through on that. I don't know that that's an interview as much as it is getting details ironed out. I guess something can change on that, but it's hard to go back when your fan base knows you're interviewing in other schools. I mean, Jan's two years at Mississippi State, 21 and 13, 21 and 14, both seasons, eight and 10 in SEC play for ninth place. Both seasons got the Bulldogs to the NCAA tournament round, the, the, the first four uh, uh, NCAA tournament the, the play-ins. Uh, two years ago, and then this past season, of actual first round, um, and, and both times they lost opening games, uh, where he really made a name for himself was at New Mexico State in the WAC. Big time performances there, um, you know, really big, really high winning percentage. Had teams that went 15 and one, 16 and 0 in a good mid major league. Took that program to three different in play tournaments, and only once has he won an in play tournament game, and that was in the 2021 2022 season. Uh, when they won the round of 64 and then met Arkansas in the round of 32 and Arkansas second elite eight run and the Hogs won a close game to get to the, the sweet 16 where the Razorbacks would then beat Gonzaga. Uh, but I think it's, you know, very interesting uh, that Chris Jans is a guy that's got a, 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 when you look at his winning percentage, most of it's based on New Mexico State. Mixed results really at Mississippi State other than in two years, he has gotten that program into back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. Has not dazzled it ever in postseason. But if you go back to New Mexico State, a lot of that had to do with the fact that even though team was program was dominant in its own league, it still came in with not the greatest seeds, typically playing higher seeds in that first round, much higher seeds. So it's hard to sometimes, I'm not making any excuses. I'm trying to give context for all of this. If Chris Jans is the guy, in my opinion, again, if you're bringing in a, a, a coach from within your league to interview at Arkansas, Arkansas is not Kentucky. And so I don't know, other than a Kentucky interview, that guys have a safe path back uh, to where they came from uh, if they're interviewing at another SEC school. As good as Arkansas is relative to Mississippi State, I, I don't know if that's one of those things where they they want to, any fan base or even admins in the athletic department or boosters or whatever they got over there, however they deal with things, want to see their head coach go interview at a, at a league competitor.
Yeah, absolutely. Always tough doing that. And Arkansas, they have to move fast. They only have two guys left right now on the roster in Trevin Brazil and Tremont Mark. Everyone is either in the transfer portal, has already transferred, or um, is out of eligibility. So things have to happen quickly here in Fayetteville, but we do expect, Kevin, it is going to take at least a couple more days until there's a plan in place for who's going to be the next head coach. Anything else that we miss uh, that you want to bring up before we wrap up? Not re not really, other than we've got, you know, uh, apparently we're going to have a uh... – a, a total eclipse come through tomorrow. <laughs> yes, there, there is the eclipse tomorrow. That That's down full totality here. Anything more bizarre than a hundred Eurotex videos and the Muslim <laughs> uh, departure and the, you know, now the, the another appearance of a very difficult process for Arkansas on a coaching hire. Uh, the eclipse just adds intrigue to it. I mean, it's almost like, you know, what's really behind what's behind what's going on here and, you know, sort of a symbol for that maybe. I we'll we'll maybe we'll see like some pla you know the planets align and the sun and the moon align maybe we'll see some stars align here at Arkansas and you know so something happened pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, this is a situation where most of them didn't want to be here, and fans are going to ache and moan. Some of them are if you don't make a hire that that people think is equitable or better. Um, but if a guy doesn't want to be here, you're really at that point. You know, you hope you've got a plan in place. You hope that your leadership, Hunter Yurichek, has has a has a strong plan in place uh, to answer that. And when he's putting out videos, I think fans expect, okay, you stepped up like that, you know. And so they assume maybe that that's what it's going to be. That's one of the possibilities that we could speculate on. But I think it falls even worse for him because people were criticizing it before Mossman left. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't get someone that, that folks say think looks like a sexy hire or someone that on paper immediately you know uh, is is either a good a strong you know a strong answer to most leaving then he's going to get more criticism for that and i think that's something to keep an eye on i'm not personally saying he should but i am personally saying from my viewpoint it's very questionable the optics uh, on some of this stuff and we'll see what the hire is um, but you know we very well may be closing in on that Absolutely. Maybe just a few days away. Well, that's going to do it for this Hog Hoops Report with Kevin McPherson. For Kevin McPherson, I'm Evan Kamiko. We'll see you all back here next Sunday.